All right, but I already have a note on it from last class period, so I assume I will remember it for this class period as well. So all right, if we want to be able to identify the domain here. Now, there's a couple things that are happening here. You guys can see we have a variable, a value x times this radical. Now, what is something I already know about that, that the function x? That's a linear, that's, right? That's the identity. Does that have any discontinuities? x? No. No. So guess what? I don't care about an x outside of a radical. I know there's no restrictions on a domain of the function x, right? So it doesn't matter. It's on the outside. Now, when I look at here, I have under the radical, I have square root of 3x minus 1. So what am I um, here? I know that everything under my radical has to be greater than or equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write, and this is written on the board as well, the radicand I want greater than or equal to 0. Because if I know the values that are greater than or equal to 0 under that radical, those are the values that are in my domain. Agreed? So all I'm going to do is set this equal to 0. Now it just comes into solving. x has to be greater than or equal to 1 third. Now, could you graph it like we did over here and then write to the right? Sure. And if that's the way you want to and that helps you understand it, fine. Do it that way. However, we can, I want you guys eventually to be able to get from here to the domain, which would be all numbers greater than 1 third. So I'm just going to write 1 third and then to infinity. But if you want to graph it on a number line to, you know, to kind of understand that, very well. Um, the other thing that I didn't do in your class or I didn't do in this class. Um, that's important. Remember, guys, when you multiply and divide by